This is Omar for Box Nation. What are you doing, Garrett? Start. What do you mean? What am I doing? I'm out. In, I'm, I've gone to Abu Dhabi this morning. I've not stopped working. I've lost my voice. I blame Lord Warren for giving me his cold at the lunch the other day. I'm not blaming Frank for it at all. I think it was coming that, that plane. Everyone was coughing on that plane on the way over. Four hours sleep a night for five nights. You know what it was like. We worked non-stop, didn't we? You know. Yeah, it was it was exhausting, but. Um... Let's just talk about what happened on Saturday night. Uh, a fight of two halves, would you agree? Yeah, or maybe a fight of three quarters, three thirds. Um, I think, you know, from from the ninth, it was the ninth that was the pivotal moment in the fight. Um, I thought Usyk was brilliant. Changed the pattern of the fight in the ninth. That 10-8 round won it for him. I don't care what people say about, oh, you six schooled him and all this stuff. It was a very, very close fight. And I've analysed, I spent an hour or two analysing the judges' scorecards today. I had it 114-113 to Usyk. The judges were aligned, the three of them, on eight of the 12 rounds, by the way. So there was four swing rounds. But there were, for me, there were three swing rounds in particular. Um... And I gave Fury the last round. If he'd won the 11th, it would have been a different contest altogether. And we'd be harking about a split decision draw right now. Um, or a majority draw, whichever the one it works out. It's very late here in Abu Dhabi where I've come to done rising to do Rising Stars Arabia um, this Saturday night on DAZN International. Um, it was an amazing contest. You know... I do worry for Tyson Fury that he took a lot of punishment in that ninth round. But how he stayed on his feet and how he recovered coming out for the tenth was staggering. Alexander Usyk was brilliant. Tyson was brilliant through six, one to six, took over in five and six, was kind of hitting Usyk at will from range. Um, and I think probably should have sustained that um, if he was going to win it, if he'd sustained it for two more rounds. Do you remember in, at the end of the sixth, there was this feeling in the arena that Fury was going to do Usyk. Do you remember? I, well, I said to someone next to me that I thought Tyson was going to stop him. Yeah, I said that that was the consensus. I don't care what people say on Twitter or social media. The consensus ringside after six rounds was that we, we felt concerned for Alexander Usyk. We did, because we feel concerned for people in these fights. Like we felt concerned for Fury in round nine. Usyk was beginning to struggle and he was pressing the space brilliantly. And that's what won it for him in the end. Caught him in that left hand, brilliant left hand. Fury got overconfident in my view. You know that expression about you can get greedy, you know? And Fury got too greedy in my view. Um, and for that reason alone, I'd like to see it again. But I think there are signs of wear and tear in Tyson as well. An age, 36 in August. There are signs, you know, so. But it was a brilliant fight. It was. It lived up to all the billing, the, 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 the pageantry, the drama of the fight, the seesawing of the fight. Like you say, a fight of two halves or a fight of three, three thirds. And in the end, Alexander Usyk was dominant in the last third of the fight, particularly that ninth round, and that won him the fight. I know you say the ninth changed everything, but wasn't it the eighth where Fury broke his nose and perhaps that... Yeah, but he didn't beat him up in the eighth. I mean, Frank Hopkins took Fury's nose. I spoke to Frank back at the Hilton Hotel afterwards. He said, once he put the swabs up there, all the blood came out and it was done. He didn't bleed again. But he, Fury had trouble in that eighth. And having done very well in 6-7, Usyk, Usyk came back strong in the seventh. I haven't got my scorecard. I have got my scorecard in front of me, actually. Hang on. Um, my voice is completely gone. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you. Um, I gave one, two, three, four. 
I gave Usyk the first, Fury the next five. So I gave Usyk the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. And Fury the twelfth. I added one fourteen, one thirteen to Usyk. Um, it was really close. It was really on the eye test. That same old thing that people watch it, they don't score it. And they think because of that ninth round that they score it for, for Usyk. It's a really close fight. And for that reason, I think they'll do it again, Umar. Yeah, to open Riyadh season in October would make sense. Yeah. I know, but also, Fury's got, to, I, Fury's got to go home and reconsider and pick up the dust from his first, you know, pick up the, 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 the mantle after his first defeat of his career, see his pregnant wife, contemplate the future. He's going to have to go out on his shield in this last fight. He may win it, he may lose it, he may draw it. But I don't think we'll see him fighting Joshua, you know. And that's not because he's a coward. I just don't think he's got that much left. 30 rounds of Wilder, 10 rounds with Naganu, um, 12 rounds with with Usyk now. Another, I think it'll go to, to decision again, or one of them is going to get knocked out because I think Fury will attack him this time. And Usyk will know that. And I think that 10 stone he put on in weight will have affected his body as well. Um, so many factors, you know, this whole era is ending in the next year and a half. Did you get the feeling, I haven't watched it back on television, so I might be wrong, but I felt like the successful rounds Tyson has second to sixth, seventh, really, the body work was key and then he neglected it after that. Did you get that impression? He just got too comfortable. He, I mean, I've written a piece about his showboating that's part of his armoury. That didn't lose him the fight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't lose him the fight. But if he'd gone tight in 7-8-9, his hands were way down when he got caught. Do you know that? Yeah. They were way down. He played rope-a-dope, stuck his tongue out, put his hands behind his back. Put his hands behind his back in the 12th. Yeah, he did. He did the same with Wilder, actually, in LA. Yeah, and, and I think that's part of Tyson, but he's played the heel in this promotion, so the hubris, the fall is enormous. So all his haters are on the case, but he sold the promotion. If he'd been as quiet as Usyk, he wouldn't have sold it in the same way. But Usyk, who I love as well, by the way, is a, is a silent assassin who took his victory in an amazing way. Um... I can't stop reliving the whole fight. It's it, it was a very powerful peon to boxing. Um, but Usyk went away with the spoils, made himself, I think, I did this piece about the top six undisputed in the last 50 years. And I've gone Lewis, Muhammad Ali, I think it's Foreman... Tyson, Mike Tyson, Holyfield, and Usyk, based on what he did on Saturday night. Um, you know, you can argue that it's like a pound for pound list, but I think that's right. I think that's how I went, um, and I've given my reasons in an interview in an article with the Telegraph. You can dispute it, of course. You can put Ali at one, you can put Tyson at one, blah, whatever. But it was um, it was befitting of an undisputed title. You know, the fact we haven't had one for 25 years. The pageantry of the event was amazing. It was it was incredible atmosphere in there, wasn't it? It was. There was about 4,000 Brits and about 500 Ukrainians, I think. Mm -hmm. The I travellers behaved. They were amazing. I must have had chats with 150, 200 travellers. And they know their boxing and they know that Fury arguably lost, didn't do enough to win. They all want to see it again. They know their boxing. You know, it's their national sport. Um, and, you know, champions lose. Great champions lose. Muhammad Ali lost five times. You know, Ty Mike Tyson lost. You know, they lost. They lose their luster. And I just think he's gone through a lot of hard rounds. Um, I think it's beginning to show. Gareth, just get a reaction to um your talk sport colleague now, Carl Froch. He's always on there. Um, he's not my talk sport colleague. Does he not work for talk sport? 
No, he's not my talk sport colleague. I don't, I've never done a show with Carl Foch. I've done one outside broadcast in my life. So he's not my talk sport colleague. And, and Carl talks a lot of shit. Yeah. And there's your headline. There you go. You're, you're, well, you're going to put that in. Don't I haven't even read. In. I haven't even read his quote yet to you. I know, but Carl is a clickbait guy. He's a clickbait guy. And he's got, listen, Carl was a brilliant fighter. I loved covering his career. Um, he was an amazing character. As Manny Stewart said about him, he reminded him of Dennis Andrews. He he was so strong and so tough with an amazing chin and never realised how limited he was. That's what Manny used to say about him. But Carl would go in there and fucking battle anyone. I love Carl. Um, but he does a lot of clickbait on his social media. You know me, I don't do a lot of clickbait. Just try and keep it gentle. I, I've, I've done a... I've done a Carl clickbait there. Um, please don't put the Carl talks a lot of shit, but he does a lot of clickbait. Yeah, go on, quote him. Go on. Okay. Uh, he's talking about Fury. He's been a fantastic fighter, unbelievable career, but he's not what he's telling everybody or what John Fury is telling everybody. No man born from his mother can be beat, can beat him. He's been humbled. Thoughts? Yeah, correct. Anyone can get beaten. Anyone can get beaten. And my empathy levels are there for everyone that gets beaten. Carl got beaten by a better man in Andre Ward and probably beats him 90 times out of 100. You know? So what were you referring to there when you said that Carl talks a lot of crap? Was it no, that he doesn't talk a lot of crap. He likes to clickbait. He takes the hard line. It's not what you say, it's the way that you say it. It's not what you do. I don't want Carl coming back on me after this interview because Carl and I are mates, right? We are mates. I love him, yeah? I have deep respect for him, yeah? Deep, deep respect. And I love co covering those, whatever it was, 11, 12, 13 world title fights in a row. I have a deep respect for the man, deep, you know? Um, and I loved covering his career. What I'm saying is Carl does that. He knows how to play the game on social media. He knows, you know what I'm talking about. He goes to the far reaches of, you know, what he can do. I love his chemistry with Rachel on air as well. I think they're amazing. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, Fury hasn't pulled the wool over anyone's eyes, in my view. He beat Wilder three times, he came back from 29 stone, he beat Klitschko, dominated for nine and a half years. Um, he was an amazing champion. I've been on tour with him. Half the people there are there because they're inspired by his mental health story. He's an extraordinary character for our sport. You know I'm close with him like you are. And I've had an amazing journey with him. And I, I'm not the man in the fucking arena. He is, you know? So Carl's entitled to say what he wants to say but Fury's been a great heavyweight champion. He was undone on Saturday night in the ninth round by an even greater guy, you know? And he's got the chance to put it right in October. What did you think of um, the corner work for Tyson? I didn't see any of it because I was sitting at a chair. I, did, I didn't have a monitor. I wasn't doing the broadcast. I was simply writing a live blog for the Telegraph. I had no access to the corner and I... Worked all day on Sunday, got up. I, I finished at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. I, I'm not trying to do violins here, but you know what it was like. We waited yeah. till 4 a.m. for Alexander Usyk. We got a bus back to the Hilton. I wrote two follow-up pieces. I had breakfast with a couple of social media guys. Went back at 9 o'clock, did Al Jazeera, GB News. I think I might have done BBC, TalkSport. Went to bed at 10 a.m., Slept for five hours, got up, wrote two more pieces for the Monday paper. Didn't take too much notice of everyone. Talked to everyone that wanted to debate about the fight. Went back to sleep, got up at 6am, came here to Abu Dhabi. I hadn't managed to see the fight back yet. No, neither. neither. So, and I, and, and I want people to realise that we're in the eye of the storm at these in these moments. So we, sometimes we miss some of the, like the corner work. I've seen tiny little Twitter clips tonight. 
I'm exhausted still, to be honest. I mean, it's 1 a.m. here in Abu Dhabi. It's 11 where you are. I've been out for dinner. I've slept today, traveled here in the morning, a little swim in the, in the sea. <laughs> to tell you my life story. Um, and, um, you know, had a row with everyone that loves me because I haven't been in contact with them for three days. Um, you know what it's like. Um, and um, listen, I, from what Tyson said at the post-fight press conference, he thought he was winning the fight going into the 12th round. I think all three judges, let me check, I'll tell you. Because I studied it in the airport for an hour this morning. I made it my job. Um, listen, you said, could do the rematch. He could walk away now, you know? But he probably won't because there's probably 40 million on the table. Um, I think Fury will come out on his sword the next time. And I know people accuse him of being a Fury fanboy, but it's a very close fight. We don't know if Usyk's got his number. I mean, you know how close I am to Tyson. I think there are signs of age there. And he won't want it. His family are very aware of, you know, his, his longevity in the sports and all those things. I don't think they'll want him to go on too long. Paris, he promised Paris, he promised Paris he'd, he'd stop after the third wilder fight, if you recall. Yeah, that was in but what, 21? Next question, please. Oh, sorry, I thought you were looking something at your phone. No, I'm all done. I was, I was, I was trying to find. Um, I was trying to find. I'm all questioned out. That's it, really. I think. Oh, no, stop. The main it. point. No, you're just with your missus, and you want to go. <laughs> Two of the three judges gave Fury the second. They were they were complete agreement with eight of the twelve rounds. Do you know that? Yeah. So there were four swing rounds. All three judges gave the last round to Tyson, and it was a close round. One judge who scored it 114-113 to Usyk gave him the 11th. Imagine if another judge has given him the 11th, because they were close rounds. We'd have had a split draw. If 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 Mike Fitzgerald had given Fury the tw the 11th, we'd have we'd have had two drawn card. We'd have had a drawn card. We'd have had a split draw. I mean, yep. sorry, we'd have had a split decision draw. Yeah, I mean, there are people out there talking like he did school him, or it was a it was a wide no, fight. I didn't school him. No, but yeah, but listen, we don't listen to people who don't watch boxing. Who's it's not their lives. It's a really close fight. But on the eye test, he got beaten up in the ninth round. He wasn't beaten up in the tenth or the eleventh or the twelfth. He was beaten up in the ninth. You can make the case that. Why did Mark Nelson step in? He didn't deliberately step in with 18 seconds to go to give Tyson Fury a break. It's just how he saw it. It is what it is. He didn't do it deliberately. He wasn't trying to... In his mind, psychologically, he knows how tough Tyson is. So that might have played in his mind. But he wasn't trying to save Tyson Fury, for God's sake. You know? So it shouldn't have been stopped in the ninth. No, because Fury survived a ninth. He survived. He got a standing count. He slumped into the ropes. Why shouldn't he have a standing count? Another ref might have let it carry on and he might have been stopped. It is what it is. He didn't do it deliberately to save Tyson Fury. He believed at the time that Fury, because he was slumped in the ropes and down, that he, he wasn't down on the ground, was he? But the ropes held him up, so he gave him a standing eight count. He didn't do it to save him. It's just it's just a fatuous argument. Do you understand? He didn't do it because Mark Nelson didn't set out in round nine to save Tyson Fury. It's just what he didn't know what time it was in the round. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Another ref might have let it go on and Fury might have been stopped, but it just is what it is. Another judge might have scored two more rounds to Fury. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I do, yeah, yeah. You can't change it. 
Okay, we look forward to the rematch if it happens. Huge occasion. I think the rematch will happen. I'm almost certain it will happen. It's going to be another emotional, dramatic night. Could Fury could lose again and it's the end of his career. He could get stopped. He could go after Usyk and hurt Usyk because Usyk was hurting in that fight as well. It was an amazing fight. Those two men gave so much. Fucking Alexander went for a fucking brain scan afterwards because they were worried about him. You know? Mm. Well, at least both men got out of the ring safe. Yeah, exactly. They both got out with their marbles intact. I don't want to see either of them take too much more damage. They're brilliant champions, the pair of them. You know? Um, it's a great time for them. I think they'll both take the rematch. I think they'll... Well, Fury's got the entitlement of the rematch. The loser was entitled. Um, you know, I understand that he will take the rematch. He's virtually declared it anyway. Um Great night. It was amazing. It was amazing. And anyone that says there wasn't the atmosphere there is just bonkers. It's bonkers. Bonkers. You could have been anywhere. You could have been in Vegas. You could have been in New York. You could have been in the, in London. You could have been anywhere. But we weren't. We were in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Your Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh. Thank you, Gia. Riyadh season. All that kudos to them for making this fight happened because they both did step into the flaming ring and they did 12 rounds and it was incredible. Congratulations, Alexander. I wait to hear Tyson says it's on and that we see the rematch in October. Great note to end on. Thank you, Gareth. See you soon. Cheers. I'll finish my mojito now. <laughs>